Paris set the fashion stage in the early 1800s by designing for women of the privileged class. At that time, there was no fashion industry in the United States. Department stores like Gimbel's and Macy's sold lengths of fabric for blouses, skirts, and other garments. Women hired dressmakers or made the clothing themselves, stitch by stitch, like the one Mary is going to show you now. In the early 1900s, women's clothing had a long, flowing, and feminine touch, such as this, as you can see in the lines of this garment. It is made of a fine grade of wool, no doubt the best fabric that could be purchased at the time. And notice her wonderful high button shoes. The fitted princess line offers a very definite silhouette and it incorporates Juliet sleeves. Many long dresses and skirts like this one used horse hair on the bottom side of the hem to protect it from dirt and wear of dragging on the ground. Her ensemble is topped off with a straw hat trimmed with many plumes. Thank you, Mary. And here comes our lovely Joan. In 1915, you might have seen a young lady playing tennis in this charming sailor suit. It is made of linen and its styling includes an interesting yoke, which is also carried through to the hip line on the skirt. Although there are buttons on the front of the skirt, it also incorporates laces at the back, complemented by an inset pleat. Stitched bias tape creates the detail on the collar and cuffs for that sailor look. It truly is a classic of that era. And I'm sure you've all noticed her wonderful high lace top shoes. Now you're saying, how in the world did a woman actually play tennis in a linen suit and high button shoes? Well, back in 1915, a gentleman was really a gentleman. He invited lovely Joan for a round of tennis on a grass court. He volleyed that ball directly to her. All she had to do was gently nudge the ball back into his court. She didn't work up even a glow, let alone a sweat. This was not Chris Everett's game. Thank you, Joan. And welcome my little Margie with another cute look from the turn of the century. Women were making their own nightgowns and robes like this one. It is made of 100% cotton. Not exactly what you would see today at Victoria's Secrets. <laughs> cotton lace accents the robe on the front and back of the yoke, the cuffs and down the front on the bottom closure. This detail is also seen on the top of the nightgown. The empress waist is created with hem stitching, which had to be done by the local seamstress. And of course, everyone wore a nightcap. When you were born, your mother put it on to hold your ears flat, <laughs> and later to keep your hair neat during the night. But mainly it was worn for warmth because homes did not have central heating as we know them today. And thank you, Margie. She, isn't she a lovely lingerie model? Here's Ellen. And I know you're going to cheer for her. In 1919, America amended the Constitution, giving women the right to vote. This victory required years of tireless effort from women suffragettes. Ellen shows us what those determined ladies might have worn. She is dressed in a beautifully tailored taupe suit. The fine pleating on the front and back of the jacket and on the skirt show off the fine workmanship of this hand-sewn suit. The little hat, which was purchased in Milwaukee, is the perfect touch. Her green sash identifies her as a suffragette. She too is wearing her high top shoes. Looks like she walked many a protest mile in old gravel smashers. <laughs> Ellen, what is your message for these fine ladies? Don't forget to vote. Don't forget to vote. <laughs>